Dances with Wolves, both the novel and the screenplay, joins us this morning with quite a story about how he got to where he is, and we'll talk about his newest novel. And also, when a child, you know you're a celebrity when you've been photographed by Annie Leibovitz. She has shot famous figures like Muhammad Ali, flamboyant musicians like Liberace, and talented performers like Richard Pryor. She became chief photographer for Rolling Stone magazine at age 23 and went on to create some of her most famous work in the pages of Vanity Fair and the American Express ad campaigns. And she has a new book that's a chronology of her work from 1970 to 1990. That's right. And it's great <coughs> to see you, Annie. Yeah, your work is just wonderful. I mean, well, how did you get involved first? Was it your mother? Well, no, actually, well, my mother, of course, was a big force behind uh, culture and art. She always wanted me to be involved in some sort of art form. I actually went to school as a painting major and took a night class in photography and uh, at the San Francisco Art Institute. And I, I loved, uh, you know, I just loved the immediacy of photography much more and I ended up changing my major. And then Rolling Stone was a young magazine, you know, out of San Francisco. It was only a couple of years old and uh, I took my photographs in, my portfolio from school in, and they asked me to start doing work for them. You know. I had heard you in an interview or heard somewhere that your message in your family, though, was that you, you really aren't, you don't exist <laughs> unless you are part of a photograph. True? My mother was photographing us or filming us with 8 millimeter film since, uh, since we were, you know, so high. And, and the family photograph was very, very important. It's true. You didn't feel like you existed unless, uh, unless you were being photographed. I have a photograph of my mother with a camera in front of her face, and I, I, I remember her, I think of her a lot like that. Do you? Yes. Yeah. They're, they were important family photographs. When you worked for the Stones, for the Rolling Stone magazine, what was that like? And also, didn't you go on tour with the Stones? Right. Actually, you know, I worked for Rolling Stone magazine right. for 13 years, and then, of course, went to Vanity Fair in 1983. Uh, in 1975, Mick Jagger asked me to be the tour photographer for the Rolling Stones. And we have some pictures here. Now, this is one of Mick in color, but there's also one in black and white. How do you make that choice? Well, I... My early work was mostly black and white. It was reportage, and uh, you'll see in the book that all the beginning of the book is mostly black and white. It's the reportage is sort of raw, you know, journalistic type of work that uh, that black and white was was uh, really appropriate for it. And um, and color, you know, color is its own is its own form, but. You know, whether or not a picture is black and white or color, it doesn't really matter as long as it's, it's, it's strong. I read in the early days you really were uncomfortable accepting money for photographs. <laughs> Why? Well, I felt I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I felt that if I was going to be, uh, you know, paid for something, that it was uh, suddenly became, uh, I had to do something for, for the person I was photographing. I think uh, one of the very first things, um, Sissy Spacek asked me to do her album cover. She, she did a country western uh, album and um, I was just a, a wreck during the shooting because I ended up saying please keep the money. I mean, I, it's it was it was difficult. It was uh, I felt uh, I had to please her and it's really important um, that you please yourself. So you know? artistically, you felt encumbered then. That's, huh? right. That's right. Now though, a day's work earns you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, is it different now? Is it different always once you're established? Well, I had to find the right kind of work that made sense for me and for my work. I, you know, the American Express work and the Gap work were, were really extraordinary campaigns. And I, they really asked me to do my work. And, and they, they made it quite explicit. They said, we don't want to interfere. We want you to do exactly what you do. And, um, and, I, and I grew with that. And I learned to use it and to um, put it back into my editorial work. You know, we have a picture here that is so famous of John Lennon and Yoko mm. Ono. And you took this just hours before uh, his death. What what happened here at this shoot? Well, this was actually done for the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, and uh, I wanted to photograph them, both of them nude, embracing. And this is not unusual for John and Yoko. They've been photographed in. They had press conferences from their beds. Right. You know, I remember for their you know their career. And uh, at the last minute, uh, Yoko decided that she didn't want to, uh, you know, that she would take her her shirt off and not her pants. So I said. Well, go ahead, leave your leave your clothes on, and of course, you know I was disappointed, but uh, it turned out to be you know m a much stronger stronger image. I, the idea of the embrace, you know, at that time, um, the fact that they were still in love, you know, and, and 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 they loved each other deeply was was important to me, and and I wanted to try to tell a story about that. Why didn't you release this to the media right after he died? You waited, didn't you? Well, I. 
I obviously, I mean, was was just stunned by the fact that you know he was he was killed that evening, and I and I felt very strongly that uh, it would be as if I was exploiting his death. You know, mm -hmm. I really didn't want to, I didn't want to sell the picture. I I think now it's a, I think now I, w I would have done differently if if it would happen now because uh, in a certain way it was it was a strong photograph and it would have been nice if it was if it was seen around the world you know it's you have to think about other things besides the money I mean it was it was a strong photograph it, it would have been nice as a, as a last photograph of John I mean people now know it's the last photograph of John but right. at the time it was such a horrible shocking time for all of us to mm. go through the death. It was, a, it was the end of an you know it was definitely the end, end, of, an of, an era. Era. end of an era. Uh, this other photograph of Demi Moore uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this one caused quite a stir did you expect it to? Uh, absolutely not. It was the most. I knew it would be sensational and and glamorous, um, and I knew it would be a different cover. But I had no idea that it would cause a controversy that it, that it did cause. And I think that says something about how uh, people perceive women, you know, men or people. Period. Perceive women in this in this country. I mean, you can see women in bathing suits and and practically nothing on. You don't. No one thinks anything of it. And then to see a woman in, in the most natural of all states. Um, and for there to be that sort of controversy, I, 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 I just thought, you know, that, that it was ridiculous. Uh, it was the most natural thing for us to do. I, I was Deming and Bruce's wedding photographer. I photographed me when she was pregnant with her first baby. We did some, some photographs together. And, and, it, and while we were shooting this, um, Demi said, wouldn't this be great if this was the cover? It was actually her idea. And it was Tina Brown uh... for Vanity Fair who had to make the decision and uh... she went with it she said this is great you know? the infamous Tina Brown who is <laughs> very strong lady with strong opinions yes hard great. for you to work sometimes with someone who is so strong and opinionated in terms of what needs to be shown no I, it's great i mean i you know you're working in a magazine environment you're working with people you're not working by yourself and um, it's great to have a, a bounce board and and it's great to have you know she comes in with a whole different idea she she comes from england and uh, she sees America, you know, as, you know, almost uh, like folklore. You know, I mean, you know, wh one of her very first, first covers was Raquel Welsh. And, and we all thought, why are we putting Raquel Welsh on the cover? And, and it, was a, it, was a great, it was a great cover. I mean, she, she, see things, she, she sees things in, in a kind of a removed way that we, w we are too close as Americans sure. to see them. So it's great. It's exciting. It's another point of view. So when you go out on assignment for Vanity Fair, does Tina say, this is my vision, Annie? Uh, or does she, she sure, just let you she go? Has, she has some ideas, mm -hmm. and, and she'll tell me. But you know, it's usually um, very different when you get there, and you have to. It's not quite um, how, how you want it to turn out. Or things happen, surprises happen. You know, like the Demi Moore. She didn't know we were going to end up shooting this, and I brought this back for her. And Let's just before we go to break, because we have thank goodness a whole other segment to show you photos. Okay. But this one of Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you saw something in this photograph that's, that <laughs> that if you point it out to us, we all see as well. Well, I, I sort of, that actually is Arnold's horse. I think that this photograph is Arnold and his, and his pet. Is <laughs> but, uh, of course, you know, the horse's thighs and Arnold's thighs sort of, uh, they match. But it's, it's, it's actually, I think, it's, I think of it as a beauty portrait of, of Arnold, actually. He's, he's actually thinned down a great deal. If you look through the book, you'll see um, I photographed him in 1976 when uh, he was filming Pumping Iron, and he was running... You know, he was competing for Mr. Universe, and there's a photograph of him in full muscle. And he's much there. heavier. Much, much heavier. Yes. Yeah. Now, did he, was it his idea to get on that white horse? Uh, we got together and we talked about what we were going to do, and he said that um, he, had, he had a horse. You know, he had, th this is something new for him. He, he, uh, this was, a, you know, a new pet in his family, and, uh, and, I, and I said, can we, can we use it? And he said that. yes, yeah. huh? I've, having seen his thighs <laughs> personally, I have to agree, they do look a lot like a horse's thighs. <laughs> we'll continue more of Annie's photos right after this. Annie Leibovitz has put some of her wonderful work into book form in a chronology, and we're just looking at a little bit of it here, and I promise you this is only a taste, but it's mm. still wonderful. You know, setting up a shoot, I'm just wondering, I mean, how many pounds of equipment and people do you have around you? <laughs> well, actually, it built up a lot. I mean, I, I got to the point I was almost carrying 19 or 20 cases, and, you know, it could be... as the American Express shootings were like small films. I mean, they, you know, they were about 20 people on the set. Now I'm really working very hard to trim it all back down again. I, I just did a shoot yesterday where it was just me and, and one assistant. Why do all those people get in the way of the artist? Well, you, you get a different kind of photograph. Do you? I mean, I love the produced photograph. I love the formal 
you know, overproduced photograph, and you'll see those photographs are in the book. But one of the great things about doing, you know, the uh, edit and looking back at 20 years is I, I found myself very nostalgic for the early work. Mm -hmm. The early work um, was very simple and very, um, you know, whatever was happening in front of you, that's what, um, that's what I got. And I miss sort of letting something just happen in front of you and, and watching it happen. And, and uh, I'm trying to get back to that. I'm sort of crawling back to that a bit, you know. Take a look at this photograph of the, of the artist Christo. In fact, you probably heard the news story. Just last week, he had yellow umbrellas all over Southern <laughs> California. At the same time, he had blue umbrellas in Japan. <laughs> Do we really know this is Christo? <laughs> no, we don't know for sure, no. It's, um, I, you know, I couldn't help but, uh, you know, Christo was very famous for rapping. Uh, mountains and, and other bridges and things like that and I just thought it would be a great idea to wrap Christo. That's great. He didn't mind? <laughs> well he didn't. I, I, I know he doesn't like the photograph now. You know, he's, he doesn't? No he doesn't, no. Huh. You know, I think he feels, you know, it, yeah he, he doesn't, I just heard he doesn't really like it. But uh, How about this one in Bette Midler? Uh, was this uh, your idea? The this, roses? Right. This was done, uh, this is when I was in, in love with making the cover of Rolling Stone and, and working in a very graphic way and um, I, I, I was looking for ways to, to be graphic, and uh, Bette Midler had just finished making the film The Rose, and I thought of, you know, her, her career was on the up and up. This was the first acting job she had, and um, I imagined her in a bed of roses. And uh, actually, the funny thing about the photograph is that the, the roses arrived, and they were all thorned, and I, we oh, had to sat, sit there no. and dethorn them. She was coming in in a couple hours, and it was very... Oh, just close call. Things, things you don't know. That, that, yeah. <laughs> How about Sting? Now, when you do a shoot like this one with Sting, do you play music? Yes. Um, I can't. I actually don't remember if we're if we're playing music out out here. But sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Actually, with a musician, you don't really. Uh, it's a, it, you don't want to put on any music that that uh, they won't like. So you let them usually choose choose the music. Uh, this was down out in the middle of the, the desert, um, El Mirage dry lake bed. Um, I was l busy loading my cameras and turned around and, and saw a sting walking around nude. I mean, he basically took off his clothes. He felt it was very, very hot and very, very stark, and he just felt that was the right thing to do. I didn't ask him to do that. He just... Had he rolled in the mud here? or uh, We ended up picking up some mud and, and, mm. and rub we did rub it all over his body. It, there are some uh, photographs of the uh, New Guinea mud people that are uh, that this is reminiscent of Irving mm. Penn had photographed, and I, I thought of, I thought of that. You, you know, I find with your photos, some of them you can just look at them forever. I mean, you just you see oh. something new every time you look at them. That's um, nice. How about working with kind of a sticky personality, someone who is difficult? We have some shots here of Miles Davis. Was that difficult? It wasn't difficult. It was, it was just sort of, I, we did that at his, it, you know, his hotel room uh, apartment in, you know, in New York, and uh, it was just sort of. I can't, the best way to describe it is sort of like walking, walking into hell. I mean, it was just very dark and, um, you know, very seductive. He's a very seductive man, and, you know, I, 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 I didn't know if I was going to get out alive. <laughs> and I sort of felt that, you know, we were going to have to uh, sort of sacrifice one of my assistants or something <laughs> like that. I, it was just a very intense situation. I mean, he was a very, he's a very dark, he was a very dark man and, and a very uh, intense man, an intense personality. And uh, I, you know, I was seduced right in, and uh, you know, it reminded me of, of the Rolling Stone days. I mean, it's mm. just a very powerful, pow powerful personality. I mean, um, a very, very strong man. Yeah, we've heard that. And um, you talked about Demi Moore and Bruce uh, Willis and getting involved with them personally. Do any of these things lead to a personal relationship? Will you end up becoming friends? You know, when I was younger, you know, I, again, I started when I was 19, 20 years old, those early days of Rolling Stone, I was more involved. I mean, their lives were more interesting than my life. You know, I, I sort of lived in, inside the photographs. But now as I'm older, I really, um, you know, I really like, a, you know, a clean line. I like being involved with them when I work and, and we separate afterwards. And I'm too busy, really too busy right now to, I mean, I meet, you know, a couple people a year, I say, gee, it'd be nice to be friends with them. Yeah. But, but we, you, know, mm -hmm. you don't time really have the time. Time is the problem. Time is the big problem. Who else has been very difficult to work with in your memory? You know, it's not really um, <clears throat> the, the person that's difficult. It's usually the circumstances are difficult. I mean, if you're told you have 10 or 15 minutes to photograph the Dalai Lama, and, and um, you know, right before you sh I shot, uh, I, you know, picked out, I, I wanted to photograph the Dalai Lama on a rock, and um, I put my lights by the rock, 
and um, you know his people came over to me and said, "Oh, please don't ask the Dalai Lama to, to sit on the rock, you know, and please don't ask the Dalai Lama to take his glasses off." And uh, the da Dalai Lama came out, and I said, uh, "Sir, would you please sit on the rock?" And and he sat on the rock, you know. And then I said, "Would you take your glasses off?" And and he took his glasses off. So again, I only have 10 or 15 minutes, it, it, you know. So the it's it's a pretty intense situation. You don't. Um, it's the circumstances that are difficult, not the people. How about Sammy Davis Jr., did you? He, well, that, that, okay, he was difficult, but I think, you know, this is again towards the end of his life, and I think he was sick, and he wasn't well, and, um, and everything felt like a struggle to him. I, I felt that, um, he, it, it was hard, it was a hard thing for him to do, and, and, um, we were out, and, and again, I liked the desert mm -hmm. motif, and I had him dancing out in the desert, and, um, and he was difficult. He was he was just a little grouchy. I I think that, um, but I don't think he was well. How about Michael Jackson? <clears throat> this picture that you have of him. I mean, it really shows mm. him as a shy person. Is this what he wanted? He is a shy person. That that same session, <clears throat> I asked him to to take dancing. I wanted to take dancing photographs of him, and and he just he said he was uncomfortable doing it. And we had about eight or nine people in the studio, and I went up to him and said. If I asked everyone to leave, would you do it? And he said, okay. And everyone left except for me and one assistant. And then he proceeded to dance for 45 minutes. And I just, I sweated right through my clothes. <laughs> and I photographed him. And I didn't want to ask him to stop because it was the most amazing, <sighs> amazing uh, demonstration. I, it just, mm. it, it was incredible. And he wasn't going to stop until I told him to stop. And then I didn't want to tell him to stop. But No pictures of children here. In your chronology, oh, really? Let me think. Are oh. there? I mean, is that something that just hasn't happened, or or something that you know, it, in terms of subject matter, is not your choice? No, I didn't. I actually, you're you're the first person. Is I, I haven't really thought about that. I've certainly have photographed children along you the have. way. Uh, uh, there is a photograph at the beginning, I think, with um, Paul Kantner and Grace Slick with her baby. Oh yes, yes. And uh, I believe there's also uh, Joe D'Alessandro is holding his baby. Actually, I love photographing. Do you um, children? You know, um, families. And, yeah. Uh, and actually, I do a lot of that um, for my friends. Actually, I'm in. I've turned into sort of a wedding baby photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Annie Leibovitz at your wedding, taking pictures yeah, of your right. baby. Aren't you lucky? This book <laughs> is really special, and I'm thinking as we approach holiday time, it's uh, obviously going to be a collector's item and something you might want to give someone that you love, or if you love good photography, get it for yourself. It's just wonderful. Thank you, Annie. Okay. Really nice to okay, meet you. Annie. Nice meeting you too. All right.